good morning good morning everyone i'm thank you i'm delighted to introduce to you uh, darais motiwala the chairman of the world's astronomical organization he has been working with this organization for many years darais was born in bombay india and moved with his parents and his late brother to london when he had just turned a teenager he lives in oxfordshire village is married to arnav and they have a daughter and grandson he was one of the earliest it graduates in the uk and spent 35 years in that industry mainly in sales and marketing In 2002 he changed careers and went into the hospitality sector and retired in 2009. Darius joined the World Restaurant Organization's International Board of Directors some 18 years ago and has held various offices including chairman. He continues to be an active member of the WZO's board and is committed to its principles. Darius passionately believes in the rights of all Zoroastrians to practice the Zoroastrian faith without any discrimination irrespective of their gender, ethnicity and location. I'm delighted to introduce and welcome Darius. of the first speaker is to warm up the audience for the following speakers and i hope to do this by telling you showing you a journey that i took and still take with wzo and i hope that by the end of the session you will be as passionate about wzo as i am so let me start from the beginning the first time i came across wzo the world's russian organization was in the late 80s when i happened to be visiting the old zoroastrian house in london when they were raising funds for the poor parsis in gujarat it came as a surprise to me to know that there were poor parsis in india it should have but it did over the next few years wzo's name came up over and over again mainly wzo published a newsletter called the zoroastrian news which was distributed to all its members its supporters and donors this was in fact the forerunner to the hamazo publication WZO formed a committee in Mumbai and this was the start of WZO India some of its committee members were also members of WZO in London in the mid 80s WZO started its charity giving in India funded by the London office In 1988, WZO jointly commissioned the Baya Report with the Surat Parsi Panchayat on the socio-economic survey of rural South Gujarat Parsis. Gosh, I had to read it. It's quite a mouthful, isn't it? This was the first survey of its type, and it highlighted the plight of the poverty-stricken conditions of the Zoroastrians in the villages of Gujarat. a small subcommittee was formed to assess and solve the needs of these zoroastrians it comprised of members from india and the uk and included the ceo of bpp at that time in 1989 wzo trust funds of india was formed under the presidency of dinsha tamboli In 
WZO gain charitable status in the UK. Wow. After all this, how could I not be part of an organization that has done so much for the Zoroastrian community in such a short space of time? Not only flattered, but I was honored to be asked to join its managing committee. And honestly, guys, this has had a profound impact on me and has changed my perspective on community service and living my life as a good Zoroastrian. I wanted to play my part in its future and have an impact on the wider Zoroastrian community. And believe me, now I have WZO running through my veins and it will continue to do so even after I step down from the committee as someday I must. Since joining, I've had several posts including their honorary secretary, their president, and latterly their chairman. My IT skills have been used to set up a bespoke membership system and to communicate electronically with the outside world. My sales and marketing skills have been used to promote WZO globally. Today, WZO is still headquartered in London with regional offices in USA, Canada, India, Pakistan, New Zealand, and Singapore. Four of these have charitable status and they run by their local president. WZO continues to support Zoroastrians and Zoroastrianism. It works closely with the WZO Trust Funds of India and other charitable organizations, the ERSF, the Puchista, and of course, Fezana. There are 10 committee members from North America, some of whom are actually here at this Congress starting with none other than the session chairman, Dunmai Dalal, Jehan Bagli, Rustam Yeganagi, I'm sure he's here somewhere, Sam Besuna, and Pamis Katibi. WZO has three primary objectives. I want to take each one of these in turn. WZO has set up specific funds for specific purposes. The general fund is for our expenses and for any other charity giving. For example, through the generosity of one of our supporters, a donation was given to the Zoroastrian Association of California for their Atashkade appeal. WZO's primary focus at the beginning were the poor Zoroastrians in Gujarat. In the early years, WZO set up the three Trusts, WZO Trusts in India, which are ably managed by Dinsha Tamboli and his wife Bachi. For many years in the beginning, these trusts, the main source for these trusts was in fact WZO in London. But thanks to Dinsha and Bachi, these funds are now self sufficient and receive their income from a number of other sources. 
until very recently, the administrative offices of these three trusts was provided free by WZO in London. Charity giving is now around the world and not restricted to Zoroastrians only. As I just mentioned, these trusts in India have become self-sufficient. So WZO looks to other areas for its charity giving. Having said that, since 2007, WZO has dispersed one million pounds around the world. That's $1.6 million. And of this, 600,000 pounds, over a million dollars, has been dispersed through the trusts in India. Around 200,000 has been dispersed for medical and education purposes. And you should note that a quarter of this money has been dispersed to non-Zoroastrian causes as well. We continue to assist our Iranian brethren as best we can. WZO has responded very positively to major natural disasters, like the Southeast Tsunami, which is now 10 years ago, the Pakistan earthquake, and then their floods. WZO can't do everything by itself. And it works closely with other charitable organizations for receiving and dispersing its funds. For example, recently, WZO made a financial contribution to a registered charity to help the Yazidis. WZO continues to receive its income from both Zoroastrians and non-Zoroastrians charitable trusts, and individuals. It has built an excellent reputation for the way it manages and disperses the funds it receives. Now we all know that a good education is a key element for any individual's future, which in fact leads on to the community's success. WZO offers interest-free loans, repayable when the individual starts to earn a living. They would like to offer scholarships, but at the moment, these funds are not large enough to support that. The education funds are open to all Zoroastrians from around the world. WZO makes an annual donation to the Fali Chotia Charitable Trust in the USA and to a scholarship scheme set up by the Zoroastrian Association of New Zealand. Another primary objective of WZO is the dissemination of knowledge on Zoroastrianism. An annual seminar is held in London generally in June, and the presenters are scholars, businessmen, musicians, lecturers, curators, and other interesting lay people who have a deep knowledge of a Zoroastrian related topic. And they've come from USA, India, Japan, China, Europe, and of course the UK. Outside the UK, it jointly sponsors seminars with the local Zoroastrian organization. Ad hoc seminars are held whenever the opportunity arises. The Hamazo, WZO's quarterly publication, is an excellent source of dissemination of information on Zoroastrians and Zoroastrianism. 
The website is another rich source of information. It has been designed to be a repository for events and news from around the world. If you would like to add information on it about your local association, then please send it to us and we will put it on the website for your region. It has copies of the past Hamazos and interesting articles on a wide range of topics. We welcome articles from a wider audience, perhaps from you. You can use the website to communicate with any of the WZO office bearers and to become a WZO member. If you've not visited the website recently, then I would urge you to do so. WZO has always defended the rights of all Zoroastrians to practice their faith as they wish. After all, religion is a very personal affair. It supports those Zoroastrians facing oppression for their beliefs, customs, and practices, irrespective of their gender, ethnicity, or culture. Sadly, some of this oppression is from within our own community. WZO is often called upon by individuals and NGOs to represent Zoroastrian refugees. If WZO is convinced that the individual is a Zoroastrian, then it will do all it can to help them. Helping Zoroastrian refugees is an ongoing task. And by its nature, we cannot discuss it openly. Today, we live in a global village, and our youth embrace that brave new world to shape its future. The Zoroastrian youth are no different, and they want their religion to progress without compromise, as we've seen yesterday. WZO wants to have more Zoroastrian youth on our committee. And here are some of them. If there are any amongst you who would like to join the committee, please do come and see me afterwards. Assisting the youth with education loans. It supports the World Zoroastrian Youth Congresses. It uses social media, and especially the website, to allow them to contribute and hear their views on how this religion can keep up with the times without losing its core beliefs. It invites them to social events. But most importantly, it tries to involve the youth, not patronize them. WZO is open to all Zoroastrians and their families. And by all Zoroastrians, I mean those born into the religion or those who have chosen that path. non zoroastrian members enjoy similar rights. WZO has a family membership. In the four regions with charitable status, we can accept local currencies, the membership dues in local currencies, and have their own local rates. You can become a member by joining WZO through the website. Since joining WZO, 
I have learned more about Zoroastrianism, the Gathas, about administrating charitable trust, and about being more community spirited. But most importantly, it has taught me to be a better Zoroastrian. And this is what that means to me. Of course, speaking my mind sometimes doesn't make me that popular, but by God, it does my heart a lot of good. So, why am I so passionate about WZO? WZO is progressive, free thinking, and open to new ideas. But at the core of it is the desire to serve all in the community as best it can. It is dedicated to the Zoroastrian beliefs and works on the principles of the Gathas. It is committed to preserve and promote the good religion of Zarathustra. WZO is for all Zoroastrians. Remember, we are all in this together. We all adhere to the same core principles. We are all Zoroastrians. WZO is an organization that I'm very proud to be part of. Hope you can be too. You should always be part of your local community and contribute to it fully. And as a WZO member, you have this opportunity to bring that global perspective to your own lives. With your support, WZO wants to do more. It would like to increase the amount of its charity giving, spread the knowledge on Zoroastrianism more often and in newer ways. WZO would like to have a library and hold teaching classes on the Gathas. hold more social events to bring the communities together, and have an area of worship which is open to all. To do this, WZO needs somewhere to work from. It needs more human resources. it needs somewhere to call home. And today, I'm very pleased to let you know that just before I flew over to the USA, WZO purchased an office block for its new headquarters and community center. And this was achieved through the generosity of an Iranian her couple and through a charitable trust. It has also left a very big dent in our funds. So any help you can give me on that, I'd appreciate it. That's the premises. It is important that we have the support of all Zoroastrians from across the world to help build this into a truly outstanding venue for education, social and religious exchanges and events. Whenever you're in London, please come and visit us. Go on, be part of something really special. Being a WZO member is about belonging to a global Zoroastrian community. 
Thank you for listening so attentively. And I think we've got a, about 10 minutes for any questions. No? Sorry, I cannot hear you. Can we come a bit forward? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to place a couple of microphone stands right on the dance floor. Just go ahead and walk up to the mic stands and ask your questions. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jasmine Kotwal, and I represent Zagni. Uh, my question to you is, you gave us an enormous sum that WCO has donated in India for charitable work. Yes. Yet there are so many smaller organizations collecting funds, like uh, Mitu Jessia's Meals on Wheels or the Young Rathisars. I'm just concerned that is there not a concentrated effort to bring everything together so that um, there's one charitable organization that helps with, with this? Well, that suggestion has been put forward many a times in the past. But unfortunately, egos and so on <laughs> does not <laughs> permit someone to do that. We would like to do that. We've discussed about it. There was also set a website supposed to be set up where if there was a request for any um, help, then all organizations would put how much, not how necessarily how much, but how much, you know, what people have done and who's contributed. But that never got off the ground. We were one of the first peoples to agree to do this and nobody else joined in. So I agree with you, but it's a question of finding a mechanism to do that. Right? So it's really it's more dependent on all the other organizations to help out. So we'd be happy to do that. Any other questions? My name is Zavair Shroff, and I represent the Zoroastrian Association of Northern California. I was wondering if you could elaborate a little more on what exactly you do in India, in the rural a areas, and how do you go about doing that? Sure. The, the very short answer to that is that India is actually very self-sufficient now. The WZO Trust Funds of India are very much receiving quite a lot of sums to help out. And they are relying on other sources. And what we do in the rural Gujarat, what the WZO Trust Funds of India does, it helps out with um, senior citizens' home. It helps the farmers with loans to rebuild the houses. So believe me, <coughs> I've seen it. Some of the farmers are living in cow dung and mud huts. And WZO, through sponsorship from around the world, can build a brick-built house for them. And it's not a lot of money. I mean, we're talking about somewhere around $8,000 to build a new home for these people. It helps out with education grants. It helps out with um, medical. It helps out with the macro credits for them. To basically help those people in rural Gujarat right, get off that poverty ladder and give them the support. Right? And a lot of that is done by the WZO Trust Funds of India. And whilst WZO in London used to support them, and they were our main, and they, we were the main source of income. They now rely on people like the Hong Kong people, Fezana, and loads of other charities to do that. Okay, but they need more. Have I answered your question? Thank you.
My name is Baram Debu, and uh, I do not represent anybody, but I, I'm associated with CGC as well as uh, Zach. Uh, thank you so much for helping farmers, because one of the person who was benefited was my nephew near the Surat village. Thank you very much for telling us that and sharing this with yes. us. Yes, <laughs> and there was a little video done, and he was there. Was he? Yeah. Another question I have is that we have very, very rich Parsis in India. Tatas, Godrej, and you name it. How come they're not helping you? Thank you. Well, W0 Trust Funds of India does receive substantial funds from the Ratan Tata Trust. And each of these associations, you know, the, the conglomerates you've mentioned, right, it's really, they do a lot of charity work, and it's really up to them to decide which areas they want to cover. Right? I cannot speak for them. But W0 Trust Funds of India does receive substantial funds from the Ratan Tata Trust. So, this, Sam would like to ask a question. Yeah, this. Oh, one more uh, yeah. The WZO Trust in India, uh, until about a year or two ago, was the only, and it may still be the only trust, Indian Zoroastrian trust that can receive funds from abroad. And that is something that uh, people should understand, that it is the only one that can receive money from abroad. But it can be only used for the purposes that the WZO Trust in India is set up for. But so you cannot use it as a channel to give it to some other fund, but if it fits into their activities, charity activities, then they are the only one that you can legally send to India. That is correct. It's because of the Indian financial... Yeah, because of the Indian regulations. Yes, correct, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edith. Thank you very much, Edith. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Let me help you down. Oh, sorry. Jimmy, how are you? Test. Good morning. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce Dr. Do